Today we're making a classic treat, pineapple upside down cake with a twist. The twist is that mine isn't a tacky mess. I'm just kidding. The twist is tons and tons of rum. This is like a rum cake. Maybe it's a pina colada cake. Delicious. These pineapples have a lot of brightness and texture. There's candied pecans all around it. And inside is this fluffy, amazing, delicious cake. Let's get started. To make the caramel, I'm adding six tablespoons of butter and half a cup of brown sugar into a pan over medium heat. And no one's gonna be upset if you add a little bit of vanilla or rum. That's nice, so aromatic, I love it. Set aside and let's cut those pineapples. So for this cake, I need one can and a little bit extra. So buy two cans, you'll have some pineapples to snack on or make this all by hand if you have all the time in the world, I don't. Just take the pineapple slices and cut them in half down the middle. You only need one ring that's uncut. Okay, that's it. We're gonna sift all of our dry ingredients, including the sugar, into a large bowl, starting with two and a quarter cups of all-purpose or cake flour. I like cake flour, but I know most people don't have it, so all-purpose works too. In you go. One and a half cups of granulated sugar. I know it's a wet ingredient, but we're putting it there anyways. A teaspoon of baking powder, a teaspoon of salt, and now we're gonna sift, 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 sift. Aerates it, gets rid of lumps, and gives it a quick premix before you whisk it up. See, look at this. I don't want this in my cake batter. That is too big. It's a big lump of sugar. Okay, take one of those bowls you were using earlier, and let's get some wet ingredients in there. Starting off with four whole room temperature eggs. a quarter cup of sour cream, a whole cup of whole milk, <laughs> and here's the deal. You could use some vanilla, that'll be delicious, or you could pour in just a little bit of rum or bourbon, remembering it's the holidays. Okay, give it a whisk. All right, that's nice. Our white mixture is done and mixed, so let's set that aside too, and on to the last prep step. Into this mixer, I'm adding three quarters of a cup of unsalted room temperature butter. I get this question a lot, and I always use unsalted butter, as most bakers do, because different butter manufacturers add different amounts of salt. So if you use brand A as opposed to brand B, it could be salty or less salt, so it's not the best idea to just say salted butter. Okay, into a mixer fitted with a paddle attachment, we're just gonna cream it up really quickly. That's as creamy as it's gonna get, and now we're gonna add in our dry mixture. What's going on? Well, it's called the reverse creaming method, and basically, you're coating all of this flour with its gluten in fat. And by doing that, you're inhibiting the gluten from activating, and your cake will be nice and cakey, as opposed to bready. Add it in a little bit of time, or all at once if you like a mess. A little bit of flour plus the other ingredients, including sugar. Mix on low. <laughs> Gradually increase. It should become nice and crummy, almost like you're making a pastry dough, but not really. Okay, now add some more flour. There we go. Neatly done. Okay. Mixing it on low, it's getting crummy. We're gonna mix it up. <laughs> and let me show you the texture right now. So I don't know if you can see this, but this is like a very crumbly mixture with butter and flour together at last. Okay. And now it's time for the wet mixture. So we're just gonna add this in in two batches for the sake of messiness. Give it a mix, scrape it down, add the rest. Mm, I smell the rum, however, I feel like I gave it a stingy pour. I'd be upset if I was, you know, a guest. So, just a little bit more. There we go. Okay, all set. Now we're gonna pour this into our pan, but first we have to prepare it. Pour your caramel into that springform pan. If you're using any pan, it'll work. 
Don't worry about getting the caramel all the way to the edges, it'll really melt and move around when the cake bakes. Add that first pineapple ring in the center. Now you're gonna add half rings of pineapple around that center piece until you have a complete, beautiful circle. Pop in your pecans. And now it's time for the sides. You'll add more half pineapple pieces around the side. Pop in some more pecans. And now you're ready to pour in the batter. Bring that batter close to the top of the pineapples. You don't want to overfill this, otherwise it'll be baking forever in a day. Let's pop it into the oven at 350 until the center is set, which totally depends on the size pan. If you want to make a mini cake, it'll probably bake for like 20 to 25 minutes. If you're making a giant one, it could bake for over an hour, so just be aware. All right, that was so easy. It's a decorated cake with no decorations. It's all baked in. There's no swooping and swiping and worrying about piping things right. It just plops out of the pan and it's done and it's pretty. All right, just by the way, before I take a bite, I wanna tell you that it's so much easier to make the smaller version of these. So if you wanna make the little baby like you saw just a minute ago, that's the way to go. They bake up in like 20, 30 minutes and they're nice and fluffy and white, lots, lots of contrast. They're not over caramelized looking and there's more pleasing to look at. This is beautiful, like I love this. It reminds me almost of a tart tartan. Okay, now for a bite, I'm super excited. I can already smell the rum, just by the way. Mm, I mean, so good. That pineapple, that's a lot of crispness of flavor. I got the caramel in there, notes of rum. Any bite with pecans is like an amazing treat. Oh, you have to make this cake. I'm just telling you, if you love pineapple, which I hope you do if you're watching this video, make the cake, you will be very happy. Mmm. All right, hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below.